and see. I bred this nice quarter mare to a jackass and raised a mule foal. And the first thing I want you to see is this foal's normal temperament and disposition. It's an ornery little devil. You'll be impressed with its energy and its athletic ability. As you watch the behavior of this foal, I think you'll agree that it's destined to grow up to become a veterinarian's nightmare. This foal is 20 days of age. It's had an hour and 40 minutes of training, which I'll describe a little bit later. Right now, I just want you to watch the behavior of this foal. I taped this because uh, people were starting to say, this imprint training may destroy their spirit. If they get too gentle and too well-mannered, they'll lose their spirit. I think you'll agree that this is as much spirit as you'd ever want to see in an animal. We named her Scooter. It's uh, July and uh, 11 o'clock in the morning the temperature is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and if it wasn't so hot, this foal would be more active than it is. After a while, I'm going to catch this foal. I'm gonna to try to catch this foal and show you the results of the imprint training that was done before it was 24 hours of age. This foal has never been roped from horseback before. So when I first catch it, it's a little bit bewildered and doesn't understand that it's been caught. I'll point out the moment that it suddenly understands it's been caught. And at that point, you will see an almost magical transformation of personality as the imprint training kicks in. I call it the Jekyll and Hyde effect because it's so dramatic. Now we're going to catch this foal. And in a moment it will understand that it's been caught. Not yet. Right there. Now it understands. And watch the change in behavior now as the training kicks in. Tie this foal to the fence. Now, I normally don't do that, and I don't recommend it. I'm going to do it just to prove that it can be done. And you'll see that whenever it pulls back against the rope, it immediately bounces forward. That's a conditioned response. I taught it that the second day, it took me five or ten minutes to teach it that, because learning is so swift at this age. When it was first born, I desensitized the feet and legs, handled, used the flat of my hand to rasp the uh, soles of the feet, and now you see I'm actually rasping them. And you notice how well it tolerates that. This mule was shod for the first time when it was a four-year-old and I had started to ride it. My horseshoer said it was the easiest first shoeing he had ever done in his life. And it was a mule, not a horse. I think you'll agree that if you can do this with a mule, it will work even more easily than a horse. 
This foal had one hour of training immediately after birth, as soon as it was born, and the next day at 15 hours of age. When it was on its feet and well coordinated, it had another 40 minutes of training when it learned to lead, learned to tie. Now that's a little bit early for most horses, but this foal was so strong, so athletic, and so well coordinated that at, I could do that at 15 hours of age. Some horses aren't ready till 24 or even 48 hours. Occasionally a weak-legged foal, you may even want to wait till the third day for the second lesson. But the first lesson, I always do immediately after birth, preferably before the foal has gotten to its feet. This particular foal was on its feet within minutes after it was born, and so what I did is I laid it back down again and went ahead with the training procedure. We don't have the time here on this tape to go into the actual training procedure, but I produced a two-hour uh, tape uh, some time ago called Early Learning, and that uh, teaches this method of training uh, in great detail. And most of what we showed you thus far shows desensitization. See how we can handle the, the mule's ears? It not only doesn't mind it, it enjoys it. Handle its mouth. When it came time to bridle it for the first time, there was absolutely no difficulty. How nicely it leads, how lightly, how responsive it is. And that just took about five minutes on each side to teach. And then we taught it to yield the hindquarters laterally. This didn't take more than one minute to teach. And this information is locked into the mind permanently because it was taught during the critical learning times. And it was properly taught. You do have to do this correctly. Now while this training of the newborn foal is easy to do and anybody can learn to do it, it's very important that it be done correctly because if you do the wrong thing, the learning is so immediate and so lasting that you can create uh, permanent problems. It's very important that anybody does this understand what they're doing. This is not a question of just petting the foal. This is an elaborate, uh, 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 ritualized training procedure and it must be done correctly and I urge you uh, to learn to do it properly before you try it because if you if you make mistakes you can spoil the foal. Now that we understand the nature of the horse's mind we can use this information to address some of the problems that we run into uh, with horses behavior. At my seminars on equine behavior there are certain problems that are invariably brought up and I'd like to talk about those specific problems now.